Hi, hi, Dean, and um, welcome to Visionary Arts TV. Thanks for being here. Well, thank you for asking me. All right, Dean. Well, um, so have you always been drawn to art and or always been interested in art? Um, I don't think so. I didn't take uh, an art class in um, grade school or high school. Um, my first art class was in college. And um, my father was a, a draftsman, so he drew technical kind of drawings. And so I was exposed to that, but I played in uh, little local garage bands. And that was my main interest in life throughout grade school and high school. Um, so you're a musician as well? I, well, I managed to uh, convince enough people that I was, that I was able to play in bands and, uh, and uh, kind of semi-professionally had a great time, didn't get anywhere, but I never had any aspirations. I did it for the fun and I had a lot of fun. So. I was successful in that way. <laughs> uh, I had this housemate that was an amazing musician and artist. And uh, he said, if you're a musician, you're halfway to being an artist. And if you're an artist, you're halfway to being a musician. So I, I think mm -hmm. a lot of the, it's, it's an adva advantage. Anyway, um, yeah. So mm -hmm. how did you get started as an illustrator? I worked for a printing as a shipping salesman asked me one day if I knew how to draw. And uh, I said, well, I'll give it a try. And he needed something for a package. We printed packaging. Well, I, I did uh, an illustration. He was happy with it. He gave me more than I was making at the job. It became a kind of a recurring of something. And I said, okay, I'll try it. And uh, eventually I was freelancing as an illustrator. And then I went to, uh, I started taking classes at the community college, um, art classes and um, some oil paintings. And one of my instructors suggested that I go to a real art school. And so I came to California and looked at a couple of them. That's quite amazing that you started, and that's probably also quite inspiring for other people that you started later later in life mm -hmm. My, you know because most people mm -hmm. think you've just got to be like naturally you know a child and a teenager and you know just mm -hmm. having always had that um <laughs> sorry dean um so what are some of your most uh, recognizable mm -hmm. uh images from your uh commercial work do they have a backstory or if you remember joe camel rather controversial character just had cigarettes and uh, it was considered a controversy but um, they paid so well that um, and I smoked at the time so I'm, I'm trying to justify why I did this but um, uh, that's probably one that got very wide exposure um, then I did uh, one movie poster which also got a huge exposure which was the naked gun but when I was in Australia, it had the movie had just opened there, so I saw my work in a, around quite a bit. The other one that's gotten a lot of exposure is an album, the only album cover I've ever done, which was for a band called Slayer, which is an LA band. But they're big in Europe, and they're they're um, they've used my artwork, they've merchandised it, and used it for twenty plus years and it's very well known people when i go to shows at certain galleries 
people are they they practically want my autograph and pictures with me and stuff because they, this image meant so much to them <laughs> which i didn't know the band at the time i so i was i was uh, oblivious to all this but now they i see they're still using it they've um, they've made uh 3d throwing backdrop work and uh so i'm just amazed that 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 had such exposure it was crazy that's, that was a very early job that's amazing how did how did slayer fi- get your image slayer called uh, another illustrator who didn't want to do the job and asked me if i wanted it it was for a, a like deaf america records or some fairly sizable record company but he just handed the job to me i was fresh out of art school and i job and didn't think much about it until years later when i was it they used it over and over and over again so it was a pure accident they didn't know about me and i didn't know about them that is amazing <laughs> the commercial stuff was it was just all over the map and that, and it's it's a long time ago i'm <laughs> I, i call myself a recovering illustrator at this point because i don't do that any as i uh was kind of burning out on illustration um there were there's only a couple of options that i could see i could either teach or i could go into fine art because i had the skill set and that's the only skill set i really have so that's that's what led to me experimenting um with things that were kind of anti-commercial almost i just i had done you know toothpaste packages and just the most mainstream artwork for so many years and uh i didn't i i had sort of this liberating feeling like wow i could just do whatever i want and and i did some strange things which i had no connections into the fine art world at all and didn't know where i would what i would do with this stuff it was just purely um, entered an online contest with one of the images and it didn't wasn't accepted into the sh- online show but one of the judges was um curating a, a gallery show and wanted that painting for his gallery so i and the show was traveling the country so i ended up kind of jumping in in the middle of this traveling show and i met some gallery owners who responded really well to the painting and uh, so i did some more and um started making connections and started showing and uh that was my entree into the fine art world well and and what is your um uh perception of the difference between illustration and fine art just out of curiosity i mean i i know that they're two different things but ju- i just want to hear your mm-hmm. perception for me they're completely different um the illustration was a uh, purely business really i had an agent and, which i never met i worked with him for 20 years i've never been to new york i don't really care to go there so um um but it was it was all where they would find the client they would negotiate the prices and the, they would call me and um the way i worked was with a super finished slick style so by the time they called me they knew exactly what they wanted they had all the preliminary drawings approved all they wanted from me was just a slick finished painting and that just suited me so well because i knew exactly how long it would take me i didn't have to go around and around with them about some detail of the painting or whatever so it was uh, i was a hired gun whatever you want just that's what i'll do and um with my fine art i do whatever i want to do i don't I do commissions. I don't do theme shows. If somebody says we have a theme for a show, I'm not interested because I'm just going to work on what I'm going to work on and do what I want to do. And if it fits the theme, 
then we're good. Or if it's close, they usually don't care that much if it's a good piece. They'll figure out a way to work. And so, so to there, it's it's a completely different game, and it's and it's I'm expressing myself. I'm expressing what I want to say and do and work the way I want to and the size and the whatever. Where it's the opposite of the illustration, where I did exactly what they wanted to do. That's amazing. So. <laughs> That's amazing. How did a career in illustration actually lead to surrealism? Well, it's uh, that's one of the things. I went into landscape painting and, and traveled around and did landscape painting. Um, in fact, I just was in France a month ago painting. So I do other things, and I've just started drawing recently. Um, with a pencil and paper, which I never did, because all the drawings in my illustration career, all the drawings were done by somebody else. So it didn't just lead from commercial art to surrealism. It led from commercial art to me doing what I wanted to do, which in some cases was going outside and painting um, and just trying to challenge myself to do things that I hadn't done. Um, but that I hadn't had a chance to do, really, in in uh, my commercial career. And surrealism just seemed to that that those early paintings just got such a response that um, I kept doing them. How did you find your style, and has it changed from when you first started? And I see you've got the airbrush, that you started with the airbrush. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I learned, I had never painted until I took a technical illustration class at a community college in Oregon. There were other older kids that had airbrushes and I was fascinated by that. It was essentially a drafting class, but some of the more advanced students had airbrushes and were doing these realistic kinds of things. So, so I got an airbrush and painted a sphere and it was like, wow, look at that. <laughs> That's when the business went digital because my work was so slick that people thought it was digital already. So I used my, my old airbrush portfolio so it was a nice, if for a lot of people, their style didn't translate well to, to the digital transition, but mine just was was seamless from, from airbrush to digital airbrush, essentially. So that was my style. It was kind of what I call generic realism. It was, um, it was perfect for mainstream packaging and uh, product illustration and so on. And then, because when I, do surrealism, I oftentimes end up with a slick airbrush kind of look, even though now I use oil paints. But that's just the kind of uh, aesthetic sensibility I have, I guess, at this point. <laughs> yeah, fair enough, because people are also think that a lot of my work's airbrushed or, yeah, computerized, but it's amazing what you can get out of, an, out of oil painting. Um, it's such mm -hmm, a versatile mm -hmm. medium. Um, now, is, is oil painting now your primary medium, or, or what is your primary medium now? Well, I, I painted uh, in acrylic when I illustrated, um, and I liked it a lot. It was great. It was fast. Um, and my work, my oil paintings, if I could airbrush them, I could do them so much faster. <laughs> but there's still something about an oil painting that has, I don't know, more currency somehow in the gallery world or in the museums. Yeah, it's probably because a lot of the old masters used it and it's just maintained mm -hmm, its mm -hmm. reputation from there, whereas all these other mediums mm -hmm, are quite mm -hmm. new, re relatively new. Um, mm -hmm. So at mm -hmm. the moment, Dean, who, who do you paint for at the moment? Well, I, I like to think that it's, it's all for me, 
but I realize if I, <laughs> if I uh, am completely honest, I'm thinking about what people are going to like, or is this going to work for that gallery or this event? And um, I look at other artists and wow, that's so good. That I, I take my game up a notch. And so it's, I, I suppose the, yeah, the honest answer is I, I get a lot of satisfaction and do things for myself. And if I do something that I think is very personal and it gets a good response, that's very satisfying. But in the back of my mind, I'm thinking about um, how this is going to be, how, what kind of response this will get from the viewer. What kind of responses generally, and I know it would probably be a mixed bag, but um, what kind of responses do you generally get for your work? I, I like to think that it's not for everybody. I kind of take pride in that, that there's a lot of people who are not going to appreciate what I do <laughs> and, uh, and even have a bad reaction, a negative reaction to some of the, the stranger pieces. And so, um, but I feel like that's, that's a good thing I'm trying to um, push myself, and, and my my nature from the illustration is to have an iconic image, something that really stands out. Or so um, some people have a bad reaction <laughs> to some of my pieces, but um, then in the gallery world and publications and, and museums, I've had such great response. It seems like people who look at art all the time are way more open to what I'm doing and have, I get a much better response. Out in the general public, it's, mm, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh. It's not universally loved, I'll say that. So. <laughs> yeah, and as you said, that's the idea, you know? Um, because I mean, some of the mm -hmm. artwork that and music that's universally loved is, uh, is a bit uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. unfortunate, um, yeah. just to be polite. But um, mm -hmm. uh, and also, well, how do you um, approach galleries, and 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 what if you don't care to sell your work? Yes. Um, well, the easy answer is put a really high price on something, and um, you can kind of guarantee yourself that you won't that you'll get the piece back at the end of the show. But to be fair to the galleries, um, they're in the business. So I just kind of consider that I'm gonna lose, I, I like to keep the, my best work. I don't, um, I'm not trying to make a living at this. So, um, but um, my only solo show was at a museum, which was really nice because nothing was for sale. They didn't expect anything to be for sale or they wouldn't sell anything anyway. So that worked, that was a good arrangement. Were there, was there uh, other things that you might want to share at all with the people, um, you know, m maybe regarding how you go about starting a new piece of work or? Well, it's, uh, it's my process for developing a painting is arduous and uh, I, I'll start things and redo them and redo them and redo them. So I figure I've got five paintings underneath every painting at least. Uh, it's not an easy process for me. I don't ever have a completed drawing or sketch or something like that of what the painting is going to be. It's always a, a evolution a process where I just revise this part and then I look at that part and oh, that now I need to revise that part and it just, so it's, um, it's a difficult process for me. And, and of course you, you that would, it would obviously be a completely different process with airbrush because airbrush is not so forgiving. No, airbrush, that's exactly right. Airbrush, uh, you, the way I worked, had to cut masks, everything had to be completely resolved in, the, in terms of the drawing. That's right. 
I had to have essentially a blueprint that I studied carefully because changing things was very difficult with the airbrush. Dean, can you tell us um, a little bit about your studio? Well, I've, I've always had an interest in architecture. Um, I did uh, drafting and my father did drafting and that kind of led to my illustration and then on to the art. So I've always wanted to design and build a house. I've designed a lot of houses, but I've, I've built other people's houses. I've never built my own. So I, I don't want to move. I like it here. So I designed a studio to build behind my house, which I built myself. And um, it's a wonderful space. I have guitar collections and all kinds of musical things, which I dabble in. And I have plenty of space for art and a little gallery. And uh, it's, uh, it's wonderful. It turned out great. And I, I love it. So, um, where are you, Dean? Okay. You're in uh, L.A.? I am on the outskirts of L.A. Actually, um, L.A., the L.A. basin is uh, surrounded by mountains and foothills. So, not far behind my house is uh, wilderness, if you will, because it's too steep to build anything. Otherwise, it would be covered with houses. So, it's kind of the edge of L.A. in a sense, although I can see downtown from uh, my yard. <laughs> oh, wow. Have you been, you, you've <laughs> but, been living um, there for a while? I've been living here forever. I, um, I came to California for art school, and uh, before that I lived in a town called Boring uh, in the state of Oregon, Boring, Oregon. And I thought I'd come to L.A., go to art school, and go back to Oregon as soon as I could. And that was 35 years ago or something, 33 years ago. So I really like it here. Oh, wow. <laughs> and I'm, I'm, 10 minutes, I'm 10 minutes from the art school I went to. I just really like it here. So. And, and you, you, you're not in a fire zone? or you... I am in a, the highest fire zone zone there is yeah it's uh, number four or something it's the highest fire zone I've, I've been to the building department many times recently because I built the studio and I am in the highest fire zone here and um, the day I bought this house uh, and gave him the check I couldn't even get to the house it was um, the neighborhood was evacuated due to a fire in the hills behind the house here. So um, that's just a constant thing here. Every few years, there's a big fire. And uh, so far, I've been really lucky. No problems. Well, I think the Australians can definitely relate to that. You know, we've... I've seen things, yeah. Wow. Well, Dean, thank you so much for being on the show today. Um, it's been wonderful having you here with us. Thanks again for asking me. I enjoyed it a lot. <laughs>